Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby. The Czechoslovakian tanks are finally here in update 913, both on the European and the American server, and I've rushed to get you my mod pack working in its entirety. This video will showcase a step-by-step -step installation guide and a few tools that can be useful for you both in-game and also in your garage. Firstly, you want to download this zipped file from the description below. Inside it are three folders, the 0.9.13, the configs and the mods folder. Next, what you want to do is to navigate to your World of Tanks installation location. For me personally, that's just on my C drive and in World of Tanks. But it'll be different for you wherever you have it installed, maybe in program files or in your games folder. Next, you want to go inside your res mods folder. And if you want to do a clean install, I suggest you delete everything inside here. And then simply copy paste those three folders from the zip file you downloaded inside your res mods folder. Next, if you want to use the statistics in this mod pack, you are going to have to go onto the XBM website. From here, you need to sign in up the top and click on the region that you play on. When you do this, you are going to be taken to the Wargaming website where you have to log in on your World of Tanks account. Once you've done this, you're going to be taken back to the XBM website where it should show you as logged in. Next, you want to click the Activate Services button and Update Statistics. This will give you two weeks of statistics in the game, and it's as simple as coming back and repeating this step if you want to continue to use them. Next, you can customize if you want to see your win chance in the game using this drop-down box here, or disable some of the XBM services. If you've done all of this correctly, then when you log into the garage, the bottom right-hand corner notification center will say status active, and that's your green light to the mod pack working. There are some really useful features in the garage that I love. Having a lot of premium tanks, it's very annoying to have to constantly be clicking up here and sending your crew to barracks and then putting them back in the tank. You get an extra checkbox at the top, automatically return crew. And so, for example, if I want to use my STB1 crew in my STA2, I can quickly move them between the vehicles with just a single click. Also, if you've got as many tanks as me, and I know this is a first world problem, it's hard to be able to find them quickly. There's an extra series of filters at the bottom so you can organize for example by tier if you want to quickly platoon with your buddies and they pick a tier 7 tank as an example then i can have all of my tier 7s available there are also some more funky filters here for example if i only want to play tanks with multiple experience bonuses or maybe i want to make some credits and only play premium tanks also one thing that's very useful is if you mouse over the tank at the bottom it gives you more statistics about the vehicle. For example, I can see the camouflage coefficients of the AMX 1357, how much gun depression and gun elevation it has, as well as its terrain resistances. And if you want to look to see how much your effective view range will be, taking into account your crew skills and consumables as an example, it tells you here 461 meters giving you the actual as well as the base readings. Also, the service record is dramatically improved. There are a hell of a lot more statistics available for you, so you can see how well you might be playing the tank compared to other players, as well as your accounts WN8 and efficiency, and how many wins in a row you have to get to get to that next win percentage. So as you load into the battle, there are going to be a lot of statistics about yourself, your team, and the enemy team available to you. Here we have the total number of games that each player has played. This is useful to see how overall experienced that player might be. Then you have WN8, which is an indication of how skillful that player might be, as well as the overall win percentage on that account, showing maybe how good a player is at carrying a game. There are a few very useful rings on the minimap. This blue ring is your current view range, and that's dynamic. If you lose your commander, you're going to see that drop right down. If you have binoculars on your tank, when you're stationary for the allotted time, then you're going to see that extend right out, probably until this yellow ring, which is the maximum spotting distance in the game, 445 meters. Then you have this white ring, which is the maximum render distance of about 564 meters. Outside of this, you physically won't be able to see a tank. As an example, over here we see an SU-152 on the map, but we can't actually see him or this T-54 Mod 1 until they come within this white ring. Also, this mod pack allows you to zoom out further, which allows you to gauge your position on the battlefield more easily and quickly establish where you might be in shots that you might have on your opponents. Also, there's one very useful feature for me, and that is the top left-hand corner. There is a hit log, which adds up how much damage total you've done this game and also records the amount of damage that you did with your last few shots. This can be very useful if maybe you're chasing a mark of excellence on a tank or trying to catch that last ace tanker that's eluding you. 
This mod pack also has custom minimap icons that you can see where your opponents were last spotted. I feel like these are a lot cleaner than Wargaming's vanilla ones that we can activate quickly here. The way that they overlay on your targets for me is just so much better. And I like also having, whether it was a heavy tank or a medium tank or a light tank, so you can quickly establish that. Also, this mod pack uses Gambiter's damage panel. So as you can see in the left, it records each of the last shots that you have taken. It also tells you whether your opponent was using high explosive, regular shells, or premium shells. This can be very useful to figure out how you might have to use your armor. For example, is your opponent spamming high explosive rounds at you? Well, then maybe you want to give him more of your side armor and give him some of that space protection that you have. Is your opponent firing heat or APCR rounds at you that have very high penetration? Well, then you maybe want to try and avoid the shots altogether and not try and angle an E100 turret, as an example. And so that's pretty much it. I like to keep my mod pack as simple as possible with as few modifications as I can, only really the necessary ones. Because, for example, when I need to play a game without any modifications, it doesn't really hamper our performance. This was the first game I played in 9.13 and had no modifications at all. Still seemed to do pretty well, at least until the end when I boldly went out to try and take out that SD1 and he shut me down. But thankfully our artillery capped out the game. And so that about covers everything. I've done the hard work so you guys don't have to. If you appreciate that, please do give this video a like down below and feel free to share it to your friends if they're looking for a, a nice, clean, quite simple mod pack that only really uses the essentials. And I wish you guys all the best of luck on the battlefield. I think I'm going to skip through to about the tier 9 Czechoslovakian medium tank and I'll be playing it all day tomorrow for my 12 hour charity marathon. So I hope to see as many of you there as possible. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.